Welcome to the second ever episode of Inter Talks, guys, brought to you by SempreInter.com, the world's number one English news website and Inter destroying club since 1908. Uh, shout out to Anthony from last week who did our first ever pilot episode. Uh, he did a great job. Uh, he just reviewed sort of what the transfer market was for Inter, looked ahead to the season and what we can expect. I did a little review of our match against Sassuolo, which unfortunately we lost. If you haven't checked out that video, it's in the description below. Um, with this video, I'm just going to be focusing on previewing our next match, which is Inter versus Torino. It's going to be on Sunday at half eight Italian time. You know, many people thought that Inter, when the uh, calendar was released, that Inter had an easy run-up uh, in the first few games. But as we saw last, uh, last week, Sassuolo was not an easy match. Of course, compounded by the pitch and maybe run some refereeing mistakes. Um, we ended up losing 1-0. Uh, as Anthony explained last week, we just didn't turn up. Uh, Sassuolo pretty much outplayed us for most of the match. So let's look back to last season. How did we perform against Torino? Actually, last season we struggled against Torino. Um, in the first match, we drew 1-1. Um, if you remember, that was a pretty good match at the, at the San Siro. Um, there was a lot of chances for both sides. Both keepers were on top form that day. Handanovic made, had to make a, quite a few big saves and Sirigu made some really good saves as well. Um, if I remember correctly, Vecino hit the crossbar uh, towards the end. And I think Perisic also hit the crossbar um, in the first half. Um, Torino scored with the Iago Falke cutting in from the right wing on his left foot, which is pretty much all he does. And, and we managed to equalise through one of Eder's very rare goals. Uh, he came on as a substitute, as he mostly did last season. Uh, he managed to make an impact this time. Uh, Icardi laid off the cross from Perisic straight to him. And uh, Eder had just had a tap in. Um, but yeah, even that match, it was, it was a very even match, um, even though we did have a lot of chances. Uh, Torino, definitely not an easy team to play, especially with the, the big man Belotti up there. But going back to that game at the San Siro against Torino last season, um, one of the great positives which was carried throughout the season was our Inter fans. Uh, there was, in that match, there were 70,000 Inter fans. Um, which in the whole season we averaged around 60,000, which in Italy was the, we were the number one in terms of average attendance, which was amazing. Amazing support from the Interisti in Italy and around the world that went to the San Siro every other weekend to support the team. Um, shout out to them because they were definitely a big part in us finally reaching uh, the Champions League last season. And this season it looks like the trend is continuing with 60,000 expected this weekend against Torino again. So once again, there's nothing I can say about Inter fans, you know, who proving what great fans that we are. We're showing that we're ready to back the boys, whatever happens, and that we believe in this team. Inter team news. Um, Dalbert. Woo! What can I say about Dalbert? Our friend Dalbert. Our big signing from last season that we, uh, we thought would solve all our problems. Um, he didn't have a bad season last season. But he was just, you know, never, never a starter in the team. You know, he had a few runs in the team at the beginning, but he never looked convincing. Spalletti just didn't seem to think he was, you know, ready for the Serie A, as he pointed out in some press conferences a few times. The move from Ligue 1 to Serie A is quite difficult, especially tactically for a fullback. You have to be switched on. Dalbert just doesn't seem to be ready for the Serie A. Uh, I think. Dalbert's just ruined all his chances of making the Champions League team as well. Uh, there's rumours of Spalletti leaving him out of the Champions League squad because we only have a certain uh, amount of players that he can take. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think uh, Azamor will definitely be starting at left-back. Um, I think he's definitely cemented his place in the team, I think, for this whole season. I think Azamor is going to be uh, one of those players that is going to be an unmovable uh, part of the team. He's going to be either at left back, at left centre mid, defensive mid, left mid. He's, he's, I think he's going to be always in the team. I think he's one of those players that you can trust always to put a, a 7 out of 10 performance at all times. Um, you know, shows, shows heart and grit in his performance. Uh, in other news, Nainggolan is back in, back in training with the team, which is great news. Uh, all interested have been waiting to see Raja in action. 
But if you saw in the week um, when we uh, were playing Sassuolo, there's a little video going around of Raja in the stands because uh, he was still injured. Um, you can see him in the video. Um, not really interested in the match. He was interested in uh, something else that went past him. There's a girl that walks past and he nudges his friend like, check that out. But yeah, that guy, he's an idol. And uh, after the match, he was caught in a, um, in a nightclub in Bergamo, uh, which is not too far from Milan, in the same outfit that he was wearing uh, when he was watching the match. So he clearly went straight from the match to the nightclub to drown his sorrows after the 1-0 loss. But yeah, as we know, he's not really the model professional. He has never claimed to be. He always says, don't expect me to be you know, the Cristiano Ronaldo model professional uh, that dedicates his life to football and the diet and not going out, not enjoying his life. Um, but it can be worrying for signs for Inter because I think that was one of the reasons why Roma let him go because he's, you know, he's 30 years old now. He is quite injury prone. Um, so we'll have to see whether it was a good deal for Inter in the end. But anyway, he is back in training. Um, so he should be featuring in the match at some point. He definitely won't be starting. I don't think that's a position that he's used to playing. Um, so it doesn't really, uh, it's not really fair to judge Lautaro's performance last week because he's kind of playing out of position at the moment. Um, I guess that's why Rafinha signing would have been so important because there would have been great competition between him and Raja for that position. Uh, Rafinha adding a more technical uh, side of um, the centre attacking midfield role, whereas Raja would add a more um, attacking side of things where he would, uh, he's better at making those late runs but also a bit more aggressive with the pressing and uh, recovering the ball and uh, a bit more all action in general. Uh, Perisic should also be making a return to the team as we saw when he came on in the second half against Sassuolo. He made the difference straight away, even though he was uh, still not fully 100% fit after coming back from the World Cup late as the other Croatians. Uh, we saw in his 45 minutes he made an instant impact with his energy and his technique and his crossing. He laid one on the plate for Icardi that... Uh, I think most of us were surprised that he didn't tuck in. But yeah, he's definitely going to be uh, starting from the beginning unless he uh, you know, picks up any injuries uh, in the week, but hopefully not. Our new signing, Sime Vershalko. Vershaliko? Uh, my Croatian's brother, let me know in the comments. Is it Vershalko or Vershaliko? Anyway, I'm going to call him Sime for now. Um, he should be making his debut at some point. Uh, reports that I read on Sempre Inter from various sources indicated that uh, Spalletti is... Uh, ready or believes Sime is ready to start from the beginning um, so he should be coming in at right back from the beginning uh, probably taking place of Danilo D'Ambrosio but I think his uh, his defending and his general consistency is the the main reason why Spalletti keeps him in the team you know he's always you know dropping six out of ten performances at least defensively he doesn't get beaten that often um, and he, he can al he can always double up as a uh, right centre-back in the three, uh, which Spalletti sometimes uh, switched up uh, the formation in the second halves in the last season. The yeah, predicted lineup for the match should be uh, Handanovic in goal, uh, Vershalko on the right-back position, um, De Vrij, Skriniar. Uh, Skriniar will be coming back as well from uh, last, uh, last match where he was injured. Um, he was a big miss last match, uh, so it's great to, um, it will be great to have Skriniar back because uh, he is definitely probably the most important player in this team now. Uh, Miranda looked a bit um, jaded, maybe he's still not 100%. He's just come back from an intense World Cup as well with Brazil. Um, but I think now we have three top, top level centre-backs that can alternate with each other. Uh, Brozovic, uh, which I think, depending on his performances, he's pretty much going to be another unmovable of the team. His passing range and uh, tackling ability is uh, too important to the team. Next to him, I think that's probably the biggest doubt that um, Spalletti has. It's a 50-50 between Gagliardini and Vecino. Vecino played last match. However, this match, I think Gagliardini is uh, more favoured to be starting next to Brozovic. Last season, we saw the best partnership that we had in the midfield was the Brozovic-Gagliardini partnership. Um, Gagliardini with this sort of physicality and tackling ability. I'm definitely favouring uh, to see Gagliardini starting uh, against Torino. Torino have quite a strong midfield physically speaking uh, with uh, Rincon and Bozzelli. They like to you know, get stuck in. 
So it'd be good to have Gagliardini next to Brozovic, um, you know, providing a bit of steel and a bit of filter that we seemed to miss last match because um, Sassuolo's midfielder seemed to bypass our midfield really easily last match. On the right, uh, Matteo Politano should retain his place. Last week, I think he was one of our better performers. Um, he did create a few chances coming in from the right wing. He was taking the, the free kicks and the corners uh, quite well. He needs this time to bet into the team, so um, I think he definitely should start. The alternatives are Caramo, who was um, who was ill in training uh, due to fever, so he didn't take part in a couple of training sessions, so he might not be 100%. And uh, our favourite man, the donkey as many call him, Antonio Candreva. Um, still at Inter, you know, I think Politano should get a good run in the team at least of five, six matches in a row before we say that he's not good enough for Inter and all these kind of things that I've been seeing online. Um, so Matteo Politano will retain his place in the right wing position. In the centre attacking mid, and I think uh, it seems Lautaro is going to retain his position as well. Uh, Spalletti doesn't have many uh, alternatives at the moment. Keita Balde could play there as well. He said he, he's, he's willing to play in all four attacking positions. But I think um, from the reports that I read, Spalletti doesn't believe he's 100% ready yet, not moulded into the team as we saw when he came on. He was trying a lot of individual runs. Um, and on the left, as I said, uh, Perisic to return. Moving on to Walter Mazzari Storino. Uh, they have a lot of injury worries as well, um, especially in the defence. Their starting right back, De Silvestri, is a big doubt uh, due to injury. Their centre back, Itzo, is also a big doubt due to injury. So they probably have to play a makeshift uh, back three or back five, uh, as Walter Mazzari likes to play. Attacking wise for Inter, there should be um, opportunities. However, attacking wise, Torino are looking quite strong this season. Um, they still have, uh, they still have managed to retain. Andrea Bellotti, who had a sort of not very good season last year due to injuries and just not uh, hitting the same form they hit the season before. Um, but this season he's had a full pre-season without injuries. Um, and they've also signed uh, Simone Zadza from uh, Valencia, uh, which is a bit of an odd buy because um, Bellotti and Zadza are very similar type of strikers, you know, big sort of center, uh, old school type of centre forward that like to work hard back to goal and um, so I don't see really how they could play together. So it'll be interesting to see whether he opts for the the usual Iago Fauke Belotti um, duo that he played last match where he goes for the Zadza Belotti uh, partnership. Uh, so overall I'm expecting another difficult match, uh, you know our first match at home this season. Um, I think some of the players might feel a bit of pressure. There has been a lot of hype around into this season. Um, many newspaper and media claiming that Inter are the anti-Juve this season, so they should be the ones uh, ahead of Napoli, Milan and uh, Roma challenging Juventus for the title. I personally don't believe so, uh, but we'll see. Uh, the season ahead will tell us. Um, but I'm looking forward to the match. I think it will definitely perform much better with it against Sassuolo. The players had another week together, training and getting to know each other. Um, my score prediction is 2-1 to Inter. Let me know in the comments below what you think the match score will be. You know, as Anthony said last week, this is uh, a show dedicated to Inter fans around the world. We want to hear your views, so get involved on social media. You know, tweet us, send us a message on Facebook, uh, leave a comment below. You know, we're looking to feature, you know, some tweets and comments onto, onto the videos. We want to get a conversation going between Interisti around the world, English-speaking Interisti around the world. Uh, we want to be the voice of Interisti around the world. So please, please get involved. Leave us feedback. You know, we just started. Maybe the quality of the videos is not up to scratch yet. As you can see, uh, just whipped up a little quick studio in my car. Um, but hopefully we'll be getting better and better as we get more subscribers and we get more used to this. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. And uh, see you on the next Inter Talks. Ciao, guys.